What's up, Royal Spartan Tribe? This is Royal Spartan 125 back for yet another great reaction. Here, let me get this. Let me, let me get this up. Hold on. Okay, this is 10 video game enemy designs you can't unsee. This is by What Culture. I'll, I'll put that down because it's really bright. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> If you want me to react to any video, just pop it into the uh, comment section down below and I will get to it next time I'm recording. And I will leave links in the description down below for the video and its channel. And if you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this on social media because it will help me out. Alright, <clears throat> let's jump in. Every once in a while you'll happily be playing through a game, doing normal stuff like lighting bonfires or shouting at dragons, and something will appear that permanently lodges itself in the back of your cerebral cortex. <clears throat> Some video game enemies are so messed up that your brain registers your horror towards them by logging them helpfully in your head, for you to remember every once in a while just before you go to sleep. And this is something that isn't uniquely limited to horror enemies. We were all traumatised by Dead Hand while playing through The Legend of Zelda in our youth, or Super Mario 64. Eels. Interestingly <laughs> enough, sometimes this can have the weirdest oh. results, like making you scared of mushrooms or looking at a camera and bursting into tears. Whether you develop an irrational fear <laughs> or not, though, you'll always remember these particular baddies, for better or for worse. I am Kirsten from What Culture, and these are 10 video game enemy designs you can't unsee. Number 10 The Kid Ghosts Corpse Party. Okay, are you prepared for this? Alright. There's going to be a lot of these games I haven't played. I don't really play scary games anymore. I did like maybe years ago. Although most folk walk into Corpse Party knowing that they're in for a messed up gore fest, however when you first see the child ghost that litter the school you're trapped in, you likely consider them a potential source of help. After all, surely they're sympathetic to your plight and want to avoid you being put into a similar situation to them, right? As it turns out, the answer is that it's a resounding hell no. The kids are just as bloodthirsty as pretty much anyone else in the series, which is to say they drink it with a straw from your still beating heart. As such, the majority of deaths you endure throughout the game are at the hands of these murder tots. They steal your face, <laughs> bury you alive, stab you in the <laughs> eyes with scissors, and generally treat you in ways you both wouldn't expect from a kid, but also wouldn't be best pleased to see a kid do. When yeah. the gruesome fates of their awesome murders are revealed, you do gain a sense of sympathy for them, even if they've made you cut out your tongue like three times by now. This is exactly what makes them memorable, as while you hate and fear these tortured toddlers, you also ultimately want to save them from their cruel fate. Number nope. 9, Obscura, Evil Within 2. Playing through The Evil Within and its sequel, there are a lot of strong contenders for monsters that traumatised you the most. There what is that? Did you see it? What the? Playing through The Evil Within What's and this? its sequel, there are a lot of strong contenders for monsters. Look at that. Size of it. Oh, some of these games. Yeah, yeah. I knew there was a reason why I don't play these games anymore. And this is it. That traumatized you the most. There are a whole lot of enemies <clears throat> specifically made to keep you up at night. What the f of this wonderful assortment of limbs and teeth, there is one sure to make you say, uh. What the hell was that? Regardless of how much of a hardened horror game veteran you are, this is none other than the monster known as the Obscura, or otherwise, that awful thing with the camera for a head. If you went into the Evil Within 2 having played the first one, you likely expected it couldn't really throw anything at you that surprised you. A scuttling, screaming, completely uncanny shutterbug is definitely something that could surprise you, making it all the worse for those who thought themselves immune to the spook. Number 8. The Infected – The Last of Us It's fair to say that the majority of people aren't frightened of mushrooms, unless they're the potentially poisonous kind. The Last of Us realised this, and presumably realised that people enjoy mushrooms and a variety of meals, and decided to get to work ruining a wholesome vegetable <laughs> forever. 
Because the creatures that we see in The Last of Us aren't the conventional zombies, but rather humans infected by an unusual type of fungus, which takes them through four increasingly gross phases of transformation. First come the runners, who follow the usual pattern of enemy that runs way too fast and makes you freak out about the fact that you can't hit them. They're usually passive but get too close and you have a speeding murderer three inches from your face. Things quickly get grosser with the stalkers and clickers, where the oh. fungus begins to totally overtake the person it's infected, growing seemingly out of their facial orifices to overtake the face with gross, mushroomy glory. Finally, and most awfully, are the bloaters. While they're less disturbing in a sense that you can't totally tell they used to be human, the knowledge that they once were and now don't resemble a person at all makes up for oh. that. Half bloated corpse. Oh god, look at that. Never played The Last of Us. Heard about it. I really should get on that. I've got so many games I need to play. I need to finish even. Too busy playing multiplayer games and stuff like that. It's like human body, half gross fleshy mushroom armor. They're enough to make you want to leave the fungi uh. out of your next pasta dish for sure. Number seven, the immoral beast, Catherine. You only need to take one brief glance at Catherine's unique monster, the, the immoral beast, to know. Got a butt for a head? That this is one monster that will lurk in your mind for a long time to come. The boss of stage three comes barging onto the scene in suitably dramatic form, revealing the unfortunate fact that you're going to be running from what appears to be a butt with fangs and large mascara clad eyes the whole time. Should you be unfortunate to be attacked by the beast, it becomes clear that it's not just an upside down human with a face where its ass should be, but rather something even weirder. It has another mouth on its back, and at the very uh. bottom of its body there appears to be what looks like breasts. The fact that the immoral beast is so confusing means what? you'll definitely spend time trying to work it all out, leaving you thinking of its strange, hero-hungry body for hours to come. Number 6. The Clock Tower – Epic Mickey before we get into anything else, it's worth addressing right off the bat that the design of the Clock Tower boss in Epic Mickey is explicitly designed to traumatise kids and make them scared of Disneyland. This is not a joke, it's literally what it was intended to do. Creator Warren Spector referred to this in an interview stating, I really want to scare kids. I want to go to Disneyland and see a 10 year old crying, Oh mummy, the Clock Tower's going to eat me! That's my fondest dream. With this in mind, Epic Mickey is sort yeah, some people are sick. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Some people are, you know, just got something wrong with their head, you know? Sort of a horror game in some respects. <clears throat> the Clock Tower isn't even the most horrific, it's merely the most mentally scarring, as it takes the iconic clock from Disneyland and makes it into a murderous monster. Between this, it's slash a smile, and the fact it's trying to kill beloved cartoon character Mickey Mouse, it's safe to say that this is one experience that you certainly didn't expect to disturb you, but yet will trouble you for some time to come. Number 5. King Minos – Dante's Inferno Dante's Inferno, despite ostensibly being more of an action game than a horror game, is truly exemplary in how creative the development team were with their designs. Since the plot revolves around you going through the seven circles of hell, they could have easily thrown in some conventional designs based oh. around whatever cardinal sin that you're travelling through. Instead, they got much wilder. Case in point, King Minos, the boss of the first circle of hell, Limbo. In Greek mythology, Minos is the king who sent people to be eaten by the Minotaur, and is often associated with snakes in his depictions. Instead of creating a regular design based off of this, the game's version of Minos is a fleshy, tentacled gatekeeper who prevents your passage deeper into hell. With skin melted yeah. into his eyes and a giant crown fused to his murky flesh, King Minos will likely get a few hits in simply by distracting you with his awful visage. Number 4. Lipotica – Resident Evil 6 Tripophobia is the word used to describe people who have an innate discomfort of fear around holes. It's thought to have been about 16% of the population, which translates to roughly 40 million people in America alone. What this means is that there are 40 million Americans who have been rendered speechless and horrified by Lapotica, a Resident Evil 6 monster that possesses nightmarish <laughs> openings across all of its skin. They also replace its uh. eyes, so even if you don't have trypophobia, you're still a sure case to be decidedly grossed out by its unsettling appearance. Yep. It also moves far faster than you'd imagine a shambling mass of pus and misery would be capable of, which provides what isn't quite a jump scare, but certainly an unpleasant time at best. 
Amongst an array of uniquely gross baddies, this flesh sack is most likely to stay in your memory, in the darkest, most desperately oh, repressed corners gross. of your memory. Number three, Goliath Pigs, Bloodborne. While the Winter Lanterns are legitimately oh. an almost endless source of horror, there's another enemy that is just a little bit more... Hogwild. The Goliath pigs are also found in the nightmare of Menzis, like the lanterns, but are also scattered around various other areas just to give you a quick heart attack. The Goliath pigs come with a disturbing addiction of roughly 200 extra eyes added to their body. What? Since you'll almost always approach oh. one of these bad boars, either from oh. behind or in a dark area, you likely won't notice their awful extra trait until it's way too late, and you're hit by its charge attack because you're too busy being filled with a profound and unshakable sense of grief. Man was not supposed to witness pigs with a hundred eyes, and yet now no. can just by total accident, and then you... Yeah, that's... that's... That's bacon you can just keep to yourself, thank you very much. Don't want any? Don't want any. Realise that you can never, ever unsee what you have just seen. Number two, uh. Crestworms, Fate Stay Night. Fate Stay Night relies on you thinking everything is going to be some sort of cutesy anime adventure, only to pull the rug from under you <sighs> and reveal untold horrors. Because in actuality, these things are one of the most disturbing creatures in all of gaming history. They're the magical familiars of one Zukun Matau, capable of replacing a person's entire body but leaving their consciousness intact, and they did with Zukun himself, in order to prolong his life. How do they do this? Well, it depends on who you are as to how unfortunate a fate of being found by the worms is. If you don't have ovaries, Congratulations! These suspiciously shaped snakes will only kill and eat you, although possibly not in that order. If you're unfortunate enough to possess ovaries though, well, put bluntly, these creatures will do anything to eat them, which involves taking the quickest route to their favourite snack, which is way, way worse than just being killed and eaten normally. Number 1. Vortex Queen – Echo the Dolphin The most messed up thing about Echo the Dolphin is that for reasons unknown, I played Echo the Dolphin, this was like decades ago. Decades. It was a fun game. I don't remember seeing anything scary in it though. Most games that include the happy little dolphin also have one moment of unimaginable horror Ugh. gently tucked away inside them, just waiting to disturb a kid so bad that they can't even look at the ocean for the rest of their lives. The most horrifying though is still easily in the first game for the Sega Genesis. For the most part, it's a light-hearted romp through the ocean where you mostly fight weird-looking jellyfish. Said this before, and I'll say it again, in America and other places it was Sega Genesis, but in the UK it was Mega Drive. Only within almost a blink of an eye, we're suddenly fighting aliens to save the world. This manifests in the uniquely traumatic boss fight against the Vortex Queen, who is lifted seemingly whole out of the Alien franchise, but is somehow more disturbing because now it exists in a game that was, until this point, for kids. Did any of these disturb you as a kid? I must admit that there are some on this list that As a kid, they're disturbing me now. Ugh. Still haunt me until this day. But if there's any that did scare you, leave us a comment down. Okay, that's the end of the video. Oof. Good thing I watched some funny ones before I did this. <laughs> Ooh, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, and put this on social media to help me out. Until the next time. I am out of here.